Good evening, everyone, and welcome to first week of December. My name is Nana, and I hope that you had a great start of the week. I certainly did, and I hope that you managed to grab some pips at the December start. We had nice uh, Aussie trade today, which was good for 30 to 40 pips, so it was really a good opening for our December trading. I know that many traders uh, have uh, some holidays during the December, but I won't be having any holiday until the late December, so I will be there with you each day and, of course, each week. Uh, Aussie trade I wouldn't take another entry because it already rejected from uh, 85.10, 85.20, so I wouldn't take any trade. I have another set up for Aussie and it still has some possibility to be rejected, but also it has a possibility to go a little bit to the upside. So stay with me, I will show you which trades I will take and which trades I did the analysis of. But mostly, it's up to you. I wouldn't take Aussie trade again. You know, my rule of thumb is, usually when I make position trade, and let's say that that trade was pretty much successful as it was today, the next bounce, I wouldn't trade. Because there is possibility for the trade to be uh, rejected. Uh, yeah, uh, let me start the webinar, Justinas, and I will tell you why it was a good trade. At 30 pips, it's not a bad trade, right? 30 to 40 to uh, anywhere from 20 to 40 pips on a single pair, and uh, especially if you're trading, if you're trading uh, intraday, it's good. And I will show you, of course I will. As always, everything which I do is pretty much transparent, and I want everything to be perfectly clear, okay? So let me, let me start with, uh, of course, as always, risk disclaimer, okay? Online educational materials are developed by Admiral Marques as Estonia for a global audience. Therefore, please take into consideration that the, uh, that the information in this session may not be suitable for everyone. To get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, please visit www.adrimarkisglobal.com, select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. So that is the first part of risk disclaimer. Risk disclosure statement stating all possible risks associated with Forex market. By accepting this risk disclaimer, you're also proceeding further with me. Okay? Admiral Markets Security detects no responsibility for information accuracy. The analysis represents the personal opinion of the author. It's me and in no way it represents the actual suggestion for the trade. These are not MBK's opinions, so the website individual is not a .co.uk website, but a globaluse.com website. Forest is risky business, and this should not be taken as advice. It's a personal opinion only, and this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. Okay. So before we start, a little bit of a quick... Uh, a reminder for all traders who are pretty much new to the webinar, all session recap trades and analysis is done with Camarilla MACD. So you always need to give price a breather. You can enter within 5 to 10 pips of the predicted level if it's in agreement with your system. It is usually how I do, of course. So entry within 5 to 10 pips of the analyzed level if it's in agreement. You always need to respect your stop loss. We take one position. Whichever hits first, we either take position trade or alternative trade, not both of them. So we take e either position trade or alternative. Position trade is uh, trend trade, alternative trade is counter trend trade. Camarilla MACD has four uh, main modules. Those are trend, counter trend, breakout, and scalping. Breakout, sometimes I also give you breakout entries, but most of the time for uh, session recaps, you, you're always given free uh, trend, positional trades, and counter trend trades. If you're buying, you should add a spread. There's a primary rule of thumb, well, uh, for buying. So if you want to buy GDP dollar, for example, at like 63.50, your spread is two pips, you're buying it at 63.52. If you're selling, you add a spread to your stop loss. For example, selling GBP dollar at 63.25, and if you have 30 pips stop loss, and the spread is two pips, then your stop loss is basically 63.57. But very often I even don't do that and leave stop loss fixed at 30 pips. Usage of trailing stop is highly recommended. 
So markets are pretty much very volatile, so I definitely recommend using of, of uh, usage of trailing stop. These recaps also are helping you to better understand the structure of the intraday trend. So if the analysis is saying that the trend is to the upside, then well, you can you can take my entry, which I uh, present you here, but you can also take the entry within your system if it's, of course, in agreement with the system. These setups are valid for today, tomorrow, and sometimes the day after tomorrow. So, sometimes setups will be valid the day after tomorrow, so please pay attention to my Twitter updates. Okay? Pips pool is the maximum available number of pips you could have got on recap entries. Uh, and as always, pay attention to Twitter updates because uh, very often I will uh, do the updates of my trades, uh, of course, on Twitter. But uh, don't forget to check Forex Factory and Admiral Markets blog because also there are trades for this particular day, okay? And every day. Uh, before I begin with the recap of last session where I will be presenting you results, I need to answer two questions. Uh, Michael John uh, cannot remember the name of the indicator. He asked me for the indicator, but uh, I didn't send it. Okay, Michael, please send the, the, the email again and tell me which indicator. Uh, or if you don't remember the name of the indicator, please refer to the webinar which where I used the, uh, the, that uh, indicator. Okay, please uh, send me an email. You know my email address, torrentialfx at gmail.com. Okay? So just send me, I will definitely send you. Why not? If I, I send, I always send indicators. So please, just uh, if, you don't, if you don't mind, take a look and see what was the name of the indicator. Uh, the link for the triangle breakout inside by indicator, yeah. Guys, uh, for all of you who are having uh, live accounts with Admiral Markets and you want to triangle breakout an inside bar indicator and you wasn't able to attend, Unfortunately, I was explaining very important things on that premium webinar. Please send uh, the request to my email, okay? Request to uh, my email. So my email is tarantulafx at gmail.com, okay? And I will send you the indicators. I will send you, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, yeah, Justinas is asking, maybe you can explain why Aussie from today was a good trade? Of course, I will explain. This is the trade for Australian dollar from today. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's let's see. It's a little bit slow. Well, I will definitely. We need to wait a little bit for this. Let me open Forex Factory. If it, this is too slow. Okay. Forex Factory. Sorry, I need to open this for you. So, okay, this is it. Uh, Aussie is in a bearish trend and on intraday chart we can see a retail gap. So, this is the retail gap. Uh, my pr proposition was to sell somewhere in this POC region, 85.05, 85.15, 85.00. What happened is the price came to this region and it stopped here at 84.80. So after the analysis, the price hit the entry and come for some 30, 40 pips. You can see it here, definitely. Okay. Australian dollar. Okay. This was our entry somewhere around this region. And look, it was rejected. Okay. 20 to 40 pips. I need, uh, of course, this was a, a good trade. Okay. This was today's trade. And I'm referring to the trade of today. Okay. The analysis, the time of the analysis showed 84.80. That was the price when I did the analysis. After it, it came to this POC and it was a perfect trade because it was a very huge momentum to the upside. And when you have a momentum to the upside and you do a trade like this, it's called fading into strength or fading the trade. So basically, I faded with this setup, this strength, and very soon the price was rejected to 84.80. I was projecting 84 
50. But you see, this is 80, 75 is L4 uh, support. And Camarilla is, uh, for me, definitely the best pivot point indicator. Look how the, the strong support. So if this trade broke through 75, it would come to this point. But yeah, 30, 40 pips, it's, 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 I think it's a good trade. So especially because it's intraday setup and sometimes when there is no momentum and when, the, when there is very, the price is going slow, you can just scalp. And this was good intraday positioning. And last recap, let me move to last recap. Euro dollar trade was good to 30 to 40 pips. GBP dollar was good for 50 pips, and that was the trade of the week. Australian dollar was good for 25 pips. It was counter trend scalp trade. Euro Swiss is 10 to 20. Well, you saw what happened to Euro Swiss. I was really expecting, uh, I didn't expect 10 to 20 pips, and I didn't expect that Euro Swiss will, would come to 20, 40, and then be sold again. I was expecting from Euro Swiss a lot. I was expecting at least 100 pips with that trade. And I was really paying attention to a referendum which was held yesterday on Sunday in Switzerland. And uh, to be honest, when I saw the results, I was, I was pretty much excited because I had uh, three, four positions opened. And I was waiting for really that jump. But it didn't happen. You know, very often it happens that banks are not giving us free lunch. And uh, everyone was long on Euros VC. I know some traders were short, and I just cannot justify any shorts on the floor on Euros VC. And I was definitely long. I had longs on average 20-25. But unfortunately, it was only 10 to 20 pips and no free lunch for us this time. GBPN didn't qualify, GBP already didn't qualify. Trade of the week, definitely pound, dollar, total of 135 pips pool. And I hope that you made at least 15, 20, 50 pips with last recap entries and results. Let me show you what happened last week. Euro dollar, I was giving you, and I, was, I, I gave you this entry pretty much, yeah, this was the type of our webinar, and I was telling you that this entry could come pretty much soon. And what happened is, you can see, the price came to our entry point here, and the trade was rejected. First time, the rejection was to 24.15, second time the rejection was to 24, but maximum available number for this trade, maximum available pip number for this trade was 40. And again, I like when these things happen, because look, the price hit my predicted level, and it was almost a no drawdown trade. The price was rejected heavily, look at this, heavy rejection to the downside. Okay, and we got nice pips from Euro dollar. Cable was also very good trade, the best trade for the week. I told you to sell at 57.30 at this point. Look, 57.30 and rejection of 50 pips. Not bad, not bad considering that after the breakout of this level, pound was pretty much bought into. I have a new setup at sell at 57.70 today so we will see if it will get if it gets hit. But 57.70 around 57.60 to 70 but I would go with maybe 70 because 60 was already tested or even 80 because we have stop loss around 58.20 so I will show you that. But last week for pound was really great so rejections and 50 pips. Aussie trade was also good. It was buy scalp swing. First thing, it came to our entry at 85.90 
and then it was rejected for some 25 to 30 pips. It was a scalp trade. Look, scalp swing. That was, that was the trade. This was the time of our webinar. The price hit level to the pip, and then it was rejected. 30 pips. So 15 pips even if you use trading stop. Great. It's, it's a scalp trade, so it was a good one. Good one. Only 15 pip trading. Only 15 pip stop loss. Okay, pound yen was positioned by at 184.15. The price came down. Look, this was the time of our webinar. The price came down, but it wasn't close to 15, unfortunately. But definitely, it was rejected. Look, and this this was uptrend. So I was waiting for a bit of a pullback before I get into a position. But unfortunately, the price was reje was rejected. How much? How many pips? It was 35 pips of our POC. So definitely, we couldn't have entered here. And pound, Australian dollar. Unfortunately, it didn't pull back to any of these levels. I was trying to get along at 80. Uh, uh, it was 81.00 and 81.25. But look, this was the time of the webinar. The price didn't make any pullback. So it was basically, I call this, uh, well, it's not a perfect direct jump, but it was a sort of direct jump from this level. Because we didn't have any swing here, if we consider a small swing like this one. This wasn't a proper swing. But, well, the price didn't reach our POC, so this trade wasn't qualified. So this was the last week. Now let's see this week, what I have for you this week. Euro dollar is still in downtrend, but I need to uh, definitely make, a, how can I say, some new proposition here. It is basically in downtrend. You know, Swiss Evolt and such. If you watch daily chart, for example, you can see it's still in downtrend. But look at this, guys. Now, this is a peculiar situation because we are seeing basically a lower high, guys. This is a lower high on this chart. Look. And look at this daily candle. I think that this has the potential to go to 25.20 on intraday basis, even more. But... 25.20 is the first target. Now, the thing is we need a pullback to buy, right? So 24.55 around that region is a buy for me. 24.20 is definitely stop loss. And 55.20 is the target. But we, we need to see that pullback. We need to see pullback. And uh, pullback is needed, but not this shallow pullback. This is the pullback I'm, I'm watching. Look at this zone. 61.8 previous buyers, rejections, and definitely look at this. Where, where did the price go last time when it hit the level? It went, guys, to 50, 25, 30. Uh, you always need to watch the price in the context of previous historical buyers and sellers and historical analysis because market is uh, very influenced by the hist history and historical price action and there is no indicator which can give you insight to historical price action you need to watch the chart so uh, use your logic guys look at this level it's in a zone what happened last time when price hit this level it was rejected so in near-term history it was rejected for 30 pips, then it was rejected for 39 pips, then it was rejected for 70 pips, then, 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 then it was broken, but it still was rejected before it was broken for some 6, 7, 10 pips. Then, 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 in near-term history, this is breakout of the level, retest, continuation. Then today, breakout, retest. What happened at the retest? The price went 50 pips. So I'm still thinking, and I, I still think that the price can be rejected 
from 2455 to 50 level, making its way to 2520, of course. Here. This is what I'm paying attention to. Look at 2520. Now, what is the most logical thing to do if you want a scalp trade? To sell at 2520, 15 pip trailing stop, if that level hits. So this is a scalp trade, this is positional trade. Let's see what will happen, but this is definitely a good spot to try a scalp, but uh, I would like to see that of course, uh, not in Asia session, because in Asia session, if it happens, we London traders might be sleeping. And for scalp trades, it's advisable to be awake. Positional trades are different, but scalp trades are pretty much, you need to babysit the trade, okay? So, the level to buy Euro Dollar for me is 24.55 to 50. To 2520, it should be target. I would look to sell GBP dollar. This pound strength today was pretty. It, it came pretty much unexpectedly. For me, I know that pound results are good. Sorry, UK results were good. But the thing is, pound jumped 200 pips almost. So definitely, I would look to sell. Because pound, in my opinion, is still in downtrend. And this is huge downtrend. And I look at this as a sort of correction. So if the price hits 57.60 to 70 region, of course, I would be looking to sell. Now, my stop loss is 58.15. But still, until that level, we can sell. And I think that the first region to sell this will be if the price gets to 56.60 to 56.7, sorry, 57.60 to 57.70, it can be rejected because look at this. It should be rejected and we will use trailing stop in this trade. And the target, if it's rejected, final target is 56.20 because this is a huge downtrend, but you know what happens after a big drop or a big jump usually the bigger the retracement is. The bigger the move is, the bigger the retracement is. So I think that uh, pound trade should be looked in the context, within the context of retracement. So this is the region, 57.60 to 57.70, where I would be looking to sell. Of course, my risk is 0 0.3, 0 0.4 in this trade. Stop loss is 57.15. Okay? This is where I would be looking to sell and to play stop. Final target 56.20, but I will be using trailing stop with this one. Aussie is in downtrend. Position sell around 85.70. Yeah, uh, this is adjusted position because I, we already had a trade today at this region. From today's analysis, we had this trade. So I want to sell a little bit higher. I wouldn't like to sell here, although this level, 85.40, uh, could be a good chance to at least try the scalp trade, so pay attention to this level for a scalp. But level for short, for short, new short, intraday short is this. It's 85.80, okay, 85.80 or 70. We can take 70 also. We can take 70. Look, it's 78.6. And look at previous price action at this zone. Look, first it was a buy, then it was a breakout retest, then again breakout retest. So this region is good to sell. And if the price, look, this is now, this is tweezers. Tweezers pattern, so this should go up now. So it's good why we took our 30 to 40 pips or whatever you have taken because this tweezers pattern can definitely push the price to the upside. And this is the first level to watch for a possible scalp. I will 
put this in possible position scalp because it's in trend direction swing stop okay this is what we are looking and pay attention to this level okay eighty five forty possible scalp trade and eighty five seventy possible position trade for Australian dollar now let's move to next pair it's dollar yen dollar yen is in uptrend hundred and seventeen point sixty with stop loss at hundred and seventy point thirty target is hundred and eighteen point fifty dollar yen look at the dollar yen okay let me move this quick so this is the zone to buy into look how many rejections of this zone in the history and after the history we see near, near term breakout pullback continuation so I'm counting on this trade but because US, US pairs are getting the fix now because it's a holiday season we should definitely use trading stop for this trade and for both trades of course either for counter trend and trend trade so 117.60 around that level 170.30 stop loss 180.50 is target we are getting close to holiday season so basically dollar fix dollar might get a little bit volatile so this is the level for me to buy into to sell I would like to see 119.00 most obvious spot for me to sell into so this is where I would be looking to buy and this is where I would be looking to sell New Zealand dollar is in downtrend 7920 or 7950 it's up to you to see the momentum and to judge the trade because look at this this New Zealand dollar can be rejected could be rejected from 7920 guys look now it's even closer guys I should make this a little bit different so this is it the first spot which you would be looking for a possible sell is 7910 it's very close now but uh, I would I would wait for a touch of this level and now it's a pretty much slow session so if this happens to jump watch for a possible short but for me even though there is a trend line even on four hour time frame I would like to see this level hit 79.50 definitely the better place to go get a short but I would be also paying attention to 79.10 it's up to you to judge but uh, definitely it can go from this level and from this and I'm paying attention a little bit more to this trade look guys it's 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 in a perfect confluence with 88.6 and you know it's a deep retracement 88.6 so look at previous price action so if, if this this should be no brainer trade if the price hits 79.50 I really think that it can go lower and of course trading stop use definite target final is 7820 if it, if it gets rejected from either one of those levels so 7910 or 7950 okay the price should be rejected of those levels so now you can ask me questions if there are any questions I will answer you 
and I will ro roll through these lights again. Okay. So euro dollar twenty four fifty five twenty four twenty twenty five twenty is target. It's in downtrend, but technically, because we are now talking in a live session, euro dollar is pretty much bullish on daily time frame. It made a, a higher low, but it's make, making a high now. It's eating this previous candle. Look. But still, it's, we are trading one hour now, so we don't take daily trades. We are talking about one hour trades. And look at one hour momentum, guys. Look. It really looks bullish on one hour time frame. Because it broke this high here and it made some sort of W, one, two, three pattern. So 24.55, long 24.20 is stop loss 25.20 is the target and sell 25.20 with 15 pip trailing stop if it gets hit or something around the region. GBP dollar, position sell 57.70, 58.15 15 stop loss, 56.20 target. Australian dollar. 85.70, 86.05 stop loss, 85.00 target. Buy scalp, 84.80, 15 pip trailing stop. And possible position scalp is 85.40, 15 pip trailing stop. Okay. And this is to the short side. I will put this here, so short, because it's a position, it's a short. Okay. So, Aussie, two possible entries, 85.70 within the trend, two possible entries within the trend. 85.70 and or 85.40. It looks. I think 85.40 could also be good for at least some good scalp swing. Look at this. It was basically double top. Then this is a history. Previous buyers at this level. Now I think there are fresh sellers. So I would be looking really maybe to at least get a short scalp swing from this level. And main intraday position is 85.70. But guys, pay attention to this level, 85.40. It can give us, I think, a position swing scalp trade. Okay. Dollar yen, 170.60, 170.30, and 180.50 is the target. Okay. Or short into 190, 90, 19, sorry. 15 pip trailing stop, so 119, 50 pip, uh, 15 pip trailing stop and possible sell trade. But only here I would be looking to short. I don't know, maybe it's too much, but this is the level for me. It's in a confluence, definitely, with previous stop and previous sellers. But dollar yen is in uptrend, so I would be looking to buy somewhere around this region. A lot of history and near-term buyers there. Okay. And New Zealand dollar. 79.10 or 79.50, 30 pip stop loss, 87, 78.20. New Zealand dollar. Look at this. Yeah, it, 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 it looks like it might it hit. Now, I, I don't know. I, I still think that this is the better pl place to sell, really, 79.50, but it's up to you. We have a trend line, we have a confluence. It might reject of this level or go up and then close below, but uh, this could be a scalp for me and this could be a real deal. So I will be mostly looking to sell here, but this can also be a potentially good scalp trade.
But you see now it's six thirty. It's it's only one hour till basically fade of the session, and we will be looking very low momentum. I don't I don't like to to play scalp trades when when session is ending. Usually those kind of trades uh, are carried over to Asia session, and then who knows what can happen. So I don't like particularly to carry over trades. Sometimes I I need that, but most often I don't like that. Claudio, what is your question on New Zealand dollar? But what about New Zealand dollar? I think it might get some scalp shorts here around this level where it is now. It's already rejecting. But definitely 79.50 is better, I think. I think, but as I say, this can also maybe, this can prove that Aussie will will be rejected again, so I don't know, really. Good levels. Yeah, thank you, Claudio. Great levels. Look how it's holding the level now. It's obvious, a trend line, historical price action, and it's very close, basically, to making W pattern. So if it makes W pattern, it can come here also. So let's see, but this level can be good for trying a short, but uh, as a scalp. The only problem is time now. I don't like it 6.40. It's, it's all, already it, it's, it's the end of the session. But it's, well, it's your call. So this is everything which I, which I have for you here. Guys, please, if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask. Of course, for all of you who didn't see, who haven't seen this interview, some things about myself, and uh, I was, I did the interview with Daily Forex, and uh, you can find some things about me, myself, how I trade, how I started to trade, then I was answering some questions, so if you're interested, you can read it. Uh, of course, always new webinars with me and Chris. Triangle breakout indicator, inside bar indicator. I was really, uh, for all of you who couldn't come to the webinar, it, uh, I'm very sorry because I made a webinar uh, particular about taking setups with these indicators and some modifications when not to use these indicators. And because th you should have, uh, how, uh, how I can tell it, you should have listened and attended the webinar. Because there are two things which you need to know about these two indicators. When to take the trade or when not to take the trade. Because you need to, uh, to watch and identify it. The triangle will do that for you, but you need to validate the trade. So for some of you who couldn't make to the webinar, then I don't know, I think that the webinar is not uploaded. But use the indicators. At least you can use the indicators. Uh, and just send me an email, I will provide you with the link for, the, for those indicators. But that is why I'm suggesting you always to listen to the webinar, because sometimes, as it was last time, indicator might have some glitch, and I need to tell you about the glitch and how to correct it. And that is what I was telling the traders, how they need to validate the trade once those indicators show the trade. And they're pretty much good, especially I, I'm fond of inside bar indicator and uh, on daily chart especially. Okay, so guys, uh, a lot more webinars to come of course. Stop hunts, sign up definitely. We'll talk about stop hunts, okay, why those happen, how to protect and so on. But definitely, definitely try to spot these levels. If you're agreeing with it, of course, you can trade it as always. So guys, uh, I don't see any questions. Thank you for attending the webinar. Uh, I hope that we will have great weeks as always. These setups are really good and uh, definitely I will be looking to trade if those trades happen. Until then guys, trade safe, keep the risk low and I wish you Many, many green pips. I will talk to you soon. Cheers.